Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a black white life gain deck updated with the latest expansion, which introduces Case of the Uneaten Feast, a one mana, a Chinese welcome like enchantment. But in addition to the life gain effect whenever a creature enters, we also get to solve the case if we gained five or more life this turn, at which point we can sacrifice the case at any point to then start replaying creatures out of our graveyard until end of turn. So this functions as a life gain enabler early on and then later in the game gives us a nice boost of card advantage when we need to recycle some of our creatures. Then at one mana we also have the Lunark Veteran, has a very similar effect, gaining us life, can also replay the Phantom from our graveyard, and then Rune Lurker Bat, a 1-1 Flying Lifelink, so this is also perfect for enabling our various 2-drops on the following turn, can also maybe let us scry in the meantime. And then at 2 mana, some of our main payoff cards include Voice of the Blast, getting a plus 1 plus 1 counter whenever we gain life, so perfect alongside all our 1-drops, and then can eventually also gain Flying and Vigilance, as well as Indestructible, and then a Amalia also lets us explore whenever we gain life, which can result in a plus one plus one counter, or we get to draw an extra land, and the extra card selection is also great, helping us dig towards more action spells, while also maybe filling the graveyard for case of the uneaten feast. If we put a Lunark Veteran in the graveyard, we can also get it back as Luminous Phantom, so Amalia provides a lot of value. And then we've got a few more life gain enablers as well. The Sadistic Pilgrim can gain life when creatures enter, and drains the opponent when our creatures die on a 2-2 death touch. And then Deep Cavern Bat gives us some hand disruption on a 1-1 flying lifelink, so this is also perfect for slowing the opponent down while giving us that life gain effect. And then two copies of Life of Toshiro, which is a nice answer to opposing Deep Cavern Bats, giving them minus one, minus one, until end of turn. Can do that twice, but we can also gain life with it or pump up one of our creatures. So pumping up a small flying life linker, for instance, can be a great way to set up our life gain synergies. Or we can just gain two life if we don't have any other board presence, which is still good enough to set up a turn three gumdrop poisoner, for instance, where we can play it and when it enters, gives a creature minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the amount of life we gained this turn. So just with a life of Toshiro, it can already give minus two, minus two, enough to take out some smaller creatures out of an aggro deck, and then we still get a three, two lifelink. But often we can first make a food token, even at instant speed, which can also be used to set up a future poisoner, or we can use our many other life gain effects. So we often uh, don't struggle to take out larger creatures with a gumdrop poisoner in this deck. And then another 3-drop is Preacher of the Schism, which can draw us extra cards at the cost of life, which we can easily offset, and then can also make 1-1 one, one life-linking vampire tokens if we're behind, and then a 2-4 death touch can usually attack and block pretty well. And then topping off our curve, two copies of the Wandering Emperor as another life gain effect and removal spell, but can also make more samurai tokens or give us more plus one counters, especially nice when paired with our flying life linkers. So the curve of our deck is pretty low, but part of that is case of the uneaten feast, wanting us to get back lots of creatures from the graveyard once we do sacrifice it, so we get a bit more value. And then the more cheap creatures we have, the easier it is to solve case of the uneaten feast, and the easier it is to go off with cards like Voice of the Blast and Amalia if we've got lots of cheap life gain triggers from our various one drops and then the mana base also has two copies of Restless Fortress as a very useful creature land that can also gain us more life and maybe help cross the finish line and then the channel lands are also staples in any standard deck so that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play with a somewhat clunky hand with our sanctum entering tapped but keepable nonetheless and then I think we played now. Okay, put on until mono white aggro. Land is good. So we can go double case before Thalia shows up. And then next turn, veteran plus maybe Amalia. Or maybe passing with Get Lost available. Could be a reason to play Pilgrim first, as kind of bait. Sure. And with Pilgrim in play. That's going to help grow Amalia even more once we do deploy it. So 
So case is solved. And just a reinforcements end of turn, that's fine. So now we're happy to mill creatures into the graveyard with the Explorer from Amalia to help set up our case. Knight Iron Convoked, okay. And they found Vanguard and Initiate. But they seem to be stuck on two lanes at least. Lots of life gain triggers. Wandering Emperor isn't bad, but if I keep it on top I feel like it's a bit of a waste here with all these additional life gain triggers. Poisoner, that one's pretty excellent. Difficult to turn down. Although we could also get it back from the graveyard, of course. I think I still keep it on top just because it's a pretty clean removal spell. And this spot's so I'm not super incentivized to trade Pilgrim for Knight Errants. Although if it happens, then um, Poisoner can still take out a Vanguard next turn. And uh, of course we're also setting up our case. Poisoner takes it. Also Vacation, a nice answer to Amalia. And that one's exiled, so no getting it back with our case. Opponent attacks and trains. Just take it here. And then we can make a food token. And this will essentially gain four before using its ability, which is enough to take out Knight Errant. And then we're pretty happy for creatures trade, so we can put our case to use. Currently only Emperor, which we cannot get back. It's only creatures. So yeah, the ossification was definitely a setback. Thalia a bit late to the party now. Still blocks our creatures quite well. And I'll land over the top, so that's what I was worried about. And our opponent can eventually pull ahead with all those extra cards in hand. And uh, can't really keep attacking. Still gonna play out my land since we might need it. This is where we want to draw some of our flying creatures to present an aerial threat. But of course, Voice of the Blast, Amalia, those are the real payoffs as I can immediately grow quite large. So I don't think I should sack my food token until we find one of those. Thalia. And the reinforcements attack. Initiate as well. Okay, I'm pretty happy if we can make some trades here. So let's see, if Thalia gets double blocked, we could take it out. Let's say we block Poisoner plus Pilgrim, that would do it. And then Veteran in front of Reinforcements. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. And then next turn we'll just sack a case. To get all three creatures back. Or I guess in this case Poisoner doesn't die. Another veteran. I guess I can wait on sacking the case still. Could also just bring back Phantom. And that will present an aerial threat, although a pretty slow one. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Opponent takes it. Four mana, so they can finally start emptying their entire hand. Adlin's a good one. And 
uh, with the second counter on initiate, they can potentially destroy my enchantment as well. Do we want to make any trades? So next turn I could attack with Poisoner, in which case our opponent could just jump with a 1-1 if they don't want it to die. Otherwise we can bring it back with a case. So I could trade for the token with my veteran, since we'll maybe bring that back as well. Okay, draw land. So, yeah, I think Poisoner has to attack. Opponent does eat it with Adlin. Okay, that's according to plan. And then I cannot um, make a food first, since we need to pay the ward as well if we want to take out Adlin here. Which I think is the plan. Now they can still remove my final case here by removing two plus one counters. But uh, at least we got our opponent to eight, so we're at 37. So... Hopefully we'll find a few flyers to close out the game. And it's going to be a Brutal Cathar on Pilgrim. They don't have any amazing attacks. There's another Knight Errant Convoked. Yep. Well, if they find more Brutal Cathars, we could be in serious trouble. And they sure did. A rune lurker bait. So sacking a food token does not enable descent. Has to be a non-token card. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to send in Phantom. Could also send in Veteran just to make another flyer. Don't hate that idea. And then we get to scry with a bait as well. Alright, so now we've got three flyers. Bottom of the land. So we'll see what they go after. Just a poisoner, so... Yeah, they are trying to outrace us on the ground. Don't quite have a two-turn clock, so drawing another flyer would help. Don't have any creatures in graveyard for the case. They may as well attack with everyone at this point, but our opponent's still keeping stuff back. This another Convoke Knight Iron, perhaps it is, that makes sense. All right, let's see what the third Knight Errant can come up with. Another Knight Errant and Phantom gaining a life. Yeah, that's a problem. Poisoner, however, can uh, take out one of their creatures. The Copper Code Vanguard is tempting since that's pumping their entire team. Or probably get rid of Brutal Cathar, which in turn uh, gets Poisoner back. We'll just have to pay a bunch of ward. So these are definitely attacking. It means we gained one life. Playing Poisoner will gain another, so that's minus two, minus two, enough to take out Cathar. So we could just take out Cathar and in turn take out Cathar again. And then, let's see. Yeah, play this, pay the ward. Pay the ward, so I could even sack a food token and take out a Knight Errant if I would really want to. But uh, I'm happy enough taking out the uh, Brutal Cathars, so I do get to make a food token first. 
Although, never mind, I guess Thalia makes a two mana now. So, yeah, two mana for the food. Three mana to play it. One for the ward, one for the ward. There's only one Vanguard, just double checking. Alright, never mind, I guess we can still make a food. Now I could be convinced to finish off the Vanguard, however. Yeah, that seems better. Instead of getting back Pilgrim. Opponent's at four. I've got a pair of three twos. And more food tokens we can sacrifice. Opponent does have another Vanguard in hand. So back up to five. They can Convoke. For one final time. And I'm pretty happy to trade off these Poisoners and get them back with our case, since our opponent doesn't have the mana to blow it up. So we can double block an Initiates. Which has me taking 15 plus 6, 21. And we gain 6 as well. And it looks good. And then get back double poisoner next turn. And can't forget about the phantom triggers. Yeah, imagine how large this Amalia would have been in the meantime. Definitely would have been large enough to destroy the board. Alright, so final Knight Errants. Put on back up to 6. Finds another Cathar and reinforcements, so the game's not over yet. Okay, so can attack. And then double Poisoner. Although I can only pay the ward once. But of course we can start by taking out the Vanguard. Well, I guess the problem now is if I sack the case, I don't have enough life gain to enable the uh, Poisoner. And if I sack a food, then I can only play one of them. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll have to settle for a single Poisoner then, alongside Pilgrim. And that's going to be enough to take out their Copper Code Vanguard, for instance. I guess never mind, we can still adventure this one and then next turn get access to it. That seems pretty good. Assuming we survive the attack. Which we should be able to. Yeah, that works. So now it's in exile, and then next turn we can play it. Abandon Mire doesn't seem all that great. Even though it can help me get back Wandering Emperor. So Cathar number is this number four? Might be the third one only. Deals with Pilgrim. Put him back up to four. They can gain another two with the reinforcements. So this is an attack for 12, 16, 20. Trade for Officer. The good news is our opponent is out of Knight Errands, so those aren't going to show up anymore. And Preacher the draw. So the Flyers need to keep attacking. 
Sadly, uh, mana short of playing Preacher, Poisoner, and Sacking of Food. So instead we can sack two foods. But one's enough for now. Take out Brutal Cathar, get back our uh, Pilgrim. Okay, there's reinforcements, so can we survive one last attack? And of course if our opponent draws another creature, we'll need to survive two more. A very slow attack with everyone. Okay, so this is getting sacrificed. And then... Pilgrim on Knight Errant or Initiates. They can destroy a food token on the way out, I suppose, so we might still be better off trading for Knight Errant. And then block uh, Cathar. This has us taking 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 plus force 18, so with the food token we're fine, and a lifelink. And if they're out of uh, spells to cast, the flyers will get there next turn. Well, this was one very grindy game. If it is indeed over. Bunch more life gain triggers. Yeah, Case of the Uneaten Feast definitely did a lot of work. Gaining us life and getting Poisoner back from the graveyard. Get to untap. May as well main phase this, but... Yeah, for opponents got a Wandering Emperor. That could maybe still matter. Another reinforcements, perhaps. Gain two. Up to four. Think I'm still okay with the attack. Let's see. I guess reinforcements. Bones at four. They would have to, at the very least, chump the pilgrim or double block. And then we're at 11. Two blockers. Yeah, it's going to be close on the way back. But then maybe Phantom triggers a bunch more. Uh, it is another reinforcements. So your opponent's not dead. They go for a double block, which does trigger Phantom. So we're at 14. Can hold off. Double Knight Errants. And then still take around 10 damage. Maybe another Ossification can win them the game. Veteran. Game 1 up to 2. Not quite enough here. Alright, well this was one epic game indeed. So, trade for the Knight Errants. Take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And kill them with our Flyers. And there we have it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing a second white source. So we don't really get to curve out perfectly, but we can go turn two bats, turn three preacher at the very least, which is still fine. Opponent also maybe a life gain deck. Okay, get to play our case now. So also a black-white deck, and yeah, definitely looks like a mirror match. Bat, somewhat likely to take our own bat. Can't play Voice of the Blast with our current mana. But 
but we can play Pilgrim. Steel Seraph is a good one. Can give their team flying or lifelink in a racing situation. But a Gumdrop Poisoner is a very nice answer, potentially. Okay, so how do we want to set this up? If I play Preacher next turn, it's making a token if it attacks, most likely. So that can gain another life for our case. If I play Poisoner, it also triggers Pilgrim and our case. So right now it could give minus two, minus two, but next turn potentially minus three. So I think we play Preacher for now. And I'll offer the trade. Yeah, as long as we stack the triggers correctly, gain life first, and then give minus X, minus X, we might be able to take out Steel Seraph. Resplendent Angel, wow. Yeah, gains one, and end of turn makes an Angel token. That's impressive. Well, we've got some uh, work to do here. Our creatures can attack. Although maybe it's only Preacher, since Pilgrim still needs to gain me the life to enable Poisoner. Opponent trades for the Angel token. And then between Steel Seraph and Resplendent Angel. Honestly, Steel Seraph enables Resplendent Angel. By itself, Resplendent Angel will need to get to 6 mana. Opponent only gains life with Veteran and Bat. So it's possible taking out Steel Seraph is just a better long-term solution over taking out Resplendent Angel. But uh, yeah, it's a close call for sure. Because if they play another Resplendent with Steel Seraph in play, they can potentially once again enable it. And then I have to decide between playing the Bats or just uh, making a food token. I think I prefer just playing the bat at that point. So we'll gain life first, and then there's plenty to take out Steel Surf. And our case is also solved. And Amalia seems like a nice follow-up, even though I can't quite play it alongside Voice of the Blessed. Resplendent attacks. Take it. And another deep cavern takes voice. But now hopefully with Amalia we'll get to dig a bit deeper. And try and find Life of Toshira would be pretty nice. Another Poisoner. And what about a Deep Cavern Bat? I think I would rather just look for more lands so we can eventually get a bunch of stuff back from the graveyard. So putting the Bat in the graveyard for our case is not a bad thing. Veteran we can get back from the graveyard. Can do that now. And we hit our land drop. Another veteran can go. Now I Gunge is interesting since we can also potentially channel it and we have two legendaries so it would only be one mana. So maybe hang on to that one for now. And then a Ruin Lurker can attack. Gumdrop Poisoner can attack. Token. Maybe a Leaf Pilgrim back. And see if we can find more lanes. Wandering Emperor is tempting. Hmm. We get another trigger afterwards. Finding a land would still potentially be better, but it's hard to turn down Wandering Emperor. Alright, I'll keep it. And 
And then... Probably fine to play the land now. Now our opponent knows about it, so it's not going to be quite as effective. Opponent's got their own Poisoner, so that can try and take something out. But Amalia's probably going to be too large. Now if they sank the food token and attack with the two bands, they can enable Resplendent Angel. So maybe that's their approach. Yeah, opponent plays Poisoner, so that's going to be minus one, minus one. A Ruin Lurker down. We'll eventually get it back once we sack the case. Interestingly, we could now decide to get rid of Wandering Emperor. So our opponent's only attacking with Resplendent Angel if they're attacking with anything. And yeah, opponent sees a riding on the wall and concedes. Amalia just pulling us too far ahead. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Triple Deep Cavern Bat can certainly disrupt the opponent. Facing Red White with a Bivouac. Might be more mid rangey deck. Opponent passes with two mana up. So if we play the Bat, it's most likely getting removed in response. But uh, given our other options, that's probably still fine. And then next turn we can maybe double spell with the Veteran. Alright, never mind, it is just a red-white Convoke deck. And Anim Pakal is pretty scary, so is Evangelist. And then the Knight Errants, which our opponents could not quite Convoke next turn, unless they draw some other Token Maker. So we can maybe wait to take Knight Errants, and then between Anim Pakal and Evangelist... Which one's the bigger threat? I guess Anim Pakal, since Evangelist we can sort of handle with the life of Toshiro. So next turn I'm gonna be forced to play another Deep Cavern Bat to take Knight Errant. And our bat also doesn't have the best attack into the 1-1 one, one flyer. So we will be taking some damage of the opponent's attacks next turn. Recruiter is also scary, but I think we still need to take the Knight Errant. No attacks. And then next turn we can double spell with Amalia. Could potentially trade Veteran here. Let's see, we're taking 10, 16. Next turn I can um, play Amalia plus another Bant just to run it out. So maybe having traded for Evangelist in the meantime is worth it, but then our opponent also gets a 1-1 Bant to block our Deep Caverns. So maybe I should just take it then. Pilgrim's interesting. I guess that's not bad here. Could go Pilgrim into Amalia and then let them keep the Epicure. Although this currently their only source of an artifact for the potential Goblin tokens. So what if I go Pilgrim into another bait? Problem is with the Evangelist they'll still have some good attacks left. So part of me also wants to just Life of Toshiro the Evangelist. So, yeah, I guess that could work. With Amalia on defense, it's maybe better, so we have a larger blocker for the recruiter attacking. And then we want to attack with the bats first. Case of Uneaten Feast isn't bad, but let's keep digging. Alright, hit a land. So now we take out the Evangelist, they'll get a 1-1 one, one token in return, but we can take that out next turn. Maybe they keep one back. 
And now we've got Amalia to hopefully discourage some attacks on the ground. They could fire up the Restless Bivouac. But we also have a veteran that can jump if needed. So we're not that on board, but it's close. So block the bivouac. And then have to jump recruiter, I believe. Still take five down to one. And now we have a few options. Can take out a bat token. And then what's our turn gonna be like? Play Pilgrim, Lurker Bat, and Deep Cavern Bat. And we get to gain two of the lifelink attacks. Yeah, that seems good. I guess we can start by playing this one. Maybe draw a land. And yeah, there's a Gleeful Demolition, so if I take Epicure, they can't actually cast it. Voice of the Blast looks good now. And then Amalia probably wants to hang back. Our opponent does have a 2-2 flyer back, which can hold off my 1-1s. But we'll try and build up a large Voice of the Blast. All right, opponent goes all out. So we get to block Recruiter. Let's jump with a Rune Lurker bat. And then let one token through, that's probably fine. And then now, also considering just firing up the uh, fortress. So we can play Voice of the Blast. I guess we need one more mana to actually attack with it, so never mind. But our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and... Uh could use a few more lanes, but maybe Amalia can find them for us. And then curving Deep Cavern Bat into Amalia is probably the plan. Hoping we can connect and uh, start drawing more lanes with it. Okay, looks like a mirror match. Maybe take away an opposing bat. Opponent just with double shielders and Amalia, maybe more of a Legends deck. Well, I'll take Amalia, leave them with two four drops. And then no channel lands we need to worry about right now. Veteran can go to the graveyard. Even though I could potentially play it alongside Voice of the Blast next turn. Would still rather just look for more lands in general. Danik, okay. 2-3. Gains a life. So now, could attack with both. See if we hit a land for maybe a Wandering Emperor. Or I could play Voice of the Blast first so we can grow that. And at the very least make a food token. Yeah, let's go with voice. Another veteran can go. Okay. 
So we're a bit light on life gain enablers right now. If they can deal with the bants, we're in a bit of trouble. Take our draw step. Another case, okay. So, got a couple of options. If I just attack with Amalia and the bats, our opponent could put Shieldred in front of Amalia. Can sack the food token to grow Amalia and trade. But of course, we know about another Shieldred coming up. That's one option. And then. Depending on whether I draw land or not, I can play Case of the Uneaten Feast. Which would be one shy of transforming. Or we can just go for Case into Bring Back Veteran. Get some triggers, try and hit our land drops. I think I'm okay trading Amalia still, since we have another one. Fourth land not to be found just yet. But we've got a large voice and the yeah, opponent apparently has seen enough. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and uh, we've got a keeper. Not as smooth an opening as I would like. Can't play the bat on one and Tamali on two. And up against Monorat, nice. So we get to see the Monorat aggro matchup. And Voice of the Blessed now an option too. Although it's much better if we can get our lifelink enablers on the battlefield first. So maybe this turn, play Rune Lurker bat, and then can uh, make a food token. And next turn, hopefully, connect our opponents incentivized to play creature this turn, Felden. So that's going to hit us for three. Could give something minus one, minus one, which is not quite enough for lethal, but we can start growing our creatures instead. And uh, do I have a preference between Amalia and Voice of the Blessed? Maybe... Amalia first, since it's legendary. Might draw into a tap land. Another poisoner. Okay. I mean, it's not bad, but problem is right now we're light on life gain sources to actually take out creatures. So, get rid of that one for now. And then Caves of Koilos is a second black source. Do I need it? So next turn we're probably going for Wandering Emperor, and then turn after we could maybe double spell Sack Food Token play Poisoner or Voice plus Poisoner, so land wouldn't be bad. Even though we might fight more with Amalia. So now Swiss Spear and an all-out attack. So this likely points towards Monstrous Rage. I don't really mind trading Amalia for one of their creatures in a Monstrous Rage. So it would have to be Etching. Yeah, that seems fine, because if they Monstrous Rage Swiss Spear, it goes up to 4 Toughness. Now, of course, we could try and set that up next turn with the Wandering Emperor, but we'll have other targets. Felden is a pretty good target for Emperor. So there it is. trade and we'll stick to the plan now Emperor's kind of obvious here maybe I should have just main phase take out Felden but uh, if we wait we might get a second activation out of it another Swiss spear And probably another Monstrous Rage here. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. Alright, Witch Talker Frenzy. Are they gonna take out their own Felden? I see. Okay, so they get to dig five cards deep. 
while denying the life gain from Emperor. And they found a land. For an Embereth veteran. Okay, but now we have a few options available, including counter on bats. Can attack for two Growing Voice, and then Poisoner can take out a Swiss Spear, so that's a pretty sweet setup. And I think Swiss Spear is still a bit more dangerous than a Veteran here. Still have a food token to gain three. I've got a Wanderer at two loyalty now. So I'm not hating my position. Play with fire takes out Poisoner. It's a good first step. And a Lightning Strike for voice, okay. So we're gonna lose Wandering Emperor. And we're gonna lose some more life. Deep Cavern Bat, maybe just in time here to take away something relevant. A Forge. And then it's tempting to just sank the food token right away. Could wait to maybe enable another Gumdrop Poisoner in the future. But we might be limited in how much mana we have available. Could also trade for Veteran now. And then they get a Forge, but they don't get to trigger it until next turn. So that's gonna take a while. Although for now the Life Linking Bat's still nice to have on our side. So I think I'm okay taking it. And then I'll just send in the Restless Fortress. Bone falls to 8, we're back up to 12. So definitely a race we're winning. And our opponent explodes, awesome! I'm glad we got to showcase a mono red matchup as well, which was somehow eluding me. But uh, yeah, should be pretty good in most circumstances. So all in all, this black-white life gain deck seems pretty well positioned in the best of one ladder at the moment. There will be some harder matchups out there, some hard control decks, with uh, main deck Lockdown for instance can be pretty tough since that card also answers our artifacts and enchantments. And then uh, of course the domain ramp decks going over the top with Atraxa will usually manage to stabilize with a sweeper before they land their powerful curve toppers. And uh, those are usually difficult to outrace. But if we're facing other creature decks, especially Monored Aggro, we're usually going to have a good time. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.